Thank you for joining us this morning and our effort to make our care for our patients a little bit better. We're working today on the uh, Thomas Splint uh, here in Victoria. It's about 6 a.m. I've drafted Dr. James Stone, one of our local orthopedic surgeons, and Stephen Young, one of our cast techs, to help uh, demonstrate the application of this splint. It's an extraordinarily important piece of equipment for transfer for patients. It was first developed back in 1916, if you can believe it. It's been around for over 100 years. In the first two years of use, it dropped the mortality from femur fractures from 80% down to 20% alone. Uh, it's better for our patients for their comfort, for blood loss, for complications of the fracture itself, and it really should be a standard of care throughout Island Health. I'm assured by Dr. Stone that it can be applied with or without sedation if done properly, and that it can be done quickly in even very inexperienced hands. And I'm going to be the guinea pig today as a patient as Dr. Stone and, uh, and Stephen Young applied one of these splints to myself. So I'll hand things over at this point in time to uh, Stephen Young. There's only a few pieces of equipment that you're going to need for this. First of all is the Thomas splint itself. We found here in our merge that uh, we only need two different sizes, the adult one and the pediatric one. For the cradle, we use two layers of three inch cast sock and we pull it down over the splint itself so we get the right length just to cradle the leg. Gonna need the tensile plastic, comes in two sizes as well, adult and pediatric, everything you need comes right in there. We use either a folded up washcloth or a ABD pad and a double wrapped tongue depressor. We actually carry them. We put them together in a merge and keep them stored in our trauma room in a kit like this so that when somebody comes in, we just have all the pieces we need right there. The last thing that I do that I found is useful for patient comfort is we'll actually wrap the top of the Thomas splint with two inch cast padding, just because it makes it nicer on the patient's um, buttocks where this goes underneath. It's a little softer than this splint itself. Most important thing about applying a Thomas splint uh, is to maintain traction on the femur the entire time. Uh, it's helpful if somebody can grab the ankle, gently pull on the, on the leg and hold it in a reduced traction position. Uh, and uh, as the next person will come and uh, cut the uh, clothes and get exposure. Sorry, V, huh? Uh, now you can see we have a, an exposed leg, it gives us everything we need to, to do. We can see if there are any open fractures, which is also helpful, which we'll have to avoid with our dressing um, and do primary care. Uh, we'll start by shaving the leg so that uh, it allows the adhesive to stick better. Yeah. Really only essential to shave two stripes either side. correspond where the tape's going to go. Next we apply the tape to the leg. Important here that there's some clearance between the heel and the, uh, and the device, probably about the roll of the uh, tensor, and uh, you have to hold it there. It cannot be too long or you lose your ability to put traction on, it can't be too short or will work. So all this time all I'm doing is maintaining traction so if there is an unstable femur it maintains it in length with ligament ataxis. If it's too long it can just be cut. Nice thing is, uh, because the tape will tend to shear on the skin, by applying a force down on it, it, it decreases the shear forces, so we put a, a wrap around. It doesn't have to be tight. In fact, I'd say put it on on the loose side because of swelling, depending on how soon you put this on after the fracture. And when you get to here, it can be difficult to get that behind the leg, but you can, if you keep maintaining that traction, elevate and make it easier.
Tend to avoid the uh, clips that come with the set and use just tape. These clips can fall off and be in the patient's bed. To apply the, uh, the Thomas splint part, uh, you have to make sure that the, the uh, foam pad here sits on the ischial tuberosity. And make sure that uh, all soft bits are out of the way. Then we can lie the leg back down onto the, onto the splint. Uh, there is a strap that comes up with the proximal part of the strap uh, of the splint, which can go on loosely. I'm just put that on. Again, I wouldn't put this on too tightly because of swelling. These tend to tighten up with time, so it's easier to leave them. Again, we'll maintain traction while we put the knot ensemble here in order to tension it further. Uh, the simplest way is to just tie a simple little loop knot here, just above, just below the heel. Come around the end of the splint. and loop through, creating a pulley system. And with that pulley system, I can apply as much or as little traction as I want. Uh, and then once I've got it to the traction that I think I need, I'm going to tie that knot off with two simple half hitches. See Boy Scout manual for details. Or Girl Scout. Let me take two simple tongue depressors taped together and you can put them in between your two lines here and get further traction by merely rotating this around until you've got an appropriate amount of tension and then turning it crossways on the Thomas splint and then we'll secure that either side with a little bit of tape. Now we have a patient who's comfortable, ready for transport. Very crucial when we're putting the splint on in this area that the uh, splint lies on the ischial tuberosity, not on the patient uh, in, in, impinging on soft tissues. Uh, and um, also making sure that the splint is stable longitudinally so it's just not riding up underneath the patient. And that's why this strap is important here. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward.